Good morning. Uh, back in theological college, we studied a lot of church history and, and I was fascinated by the different divisions and debates and controversies and schisms that, that appeared in the life of the church, particularly in the early centuries, but, but right through the history and became inquisitions and witch hunts and heresy trials and all the rest. Deep divisions, the ugly side of church. And I realise it's, it's not just church, it's wherever humans gather. And I recognise it's in all sorts of places. Political parties break up and governments tear themselves apart and corporations and boards and businesses and school boards and PNCs and sporting teams and sporting groups and community organisations, neighbourhoods and families. I mean, we've got a pandemic of domestic violence of people killing each other and hurting each other, particularly men over women and children. Division and conflict, the ugly side of humans that come together with ego and passionate ideas and beliefs and structures and definitions of who's in and who's out and defining people and excluding those who seem or appear different. On the other side is love. When, when people come together in love and relationship and, and focus and prioritise relationship, compassion and justice, reaching out and welcoming and hospitality and generosity. We see the beautiful side of humanity. And, and certainly when the church e exemplifies this sort of stuff, we see it at its most beautiful and wonderful and prophetic in the world. A week or so back, I, I got a phone call, a series of phone calls in the end. Uh, an old friend of mine died. Um, one, I, I haven't seen her or had a lot to do with her over the last decade or so since I left the church we were both at. I first met Heather when I moved to that church as minister nearly 30 years ago and there was her and her husband Pat and their four children, teenage children. They were a lovely family, integral into the life of the church, really loving and generous, hospitable, welcoming, a really wonderful part of our church family. A diverse family of people uh, our church was. We held together those who were very conservative through to those who were more liberal and everyone in between. And, and I think it was the, the, the loving relationships that, that held us. A, a few years into my time there, Pat succumbed to an illness and, and died. And we held his funeral, which was a, a great celebration of a life, but deeply sad that he, that he lost his life in, in midlife. It was a huge loss for us and for the family. Over the next few years, the, or the four children each moved away, married and, and moved to find their own home, a place, a church of their own, or moved away for work. And, and then I moved on and, and a couple of years after I moved, Heather moved into a, a retirement village and, and found a, a new church community there, a very different one from the one that we belonged to together. And so when, when she died, her, her four children came together to, to organise the, the funeral and did a, a wonderful job, but invited me to be part of that as the last minister, I guess, that they all had and shared together. And we were in that old church that we all shared because we needed somewhere big enough for 150, 200 people who would gather. And as I listened to the stories of Heather and as I thought myself about our times together, and as I stood before this, this congregation and, and listened to the stories that people shared on that day, I, I remembered. And, you know, Heather and Pat came from a, a different place in faith than me. And, and I know that some of the things I said and believed and put forward rubbed up against them. We didn't always agree on everything. We had different perspectives and experiences and backgrounds and ways we saw life and faith and God. And they didn't always agree. We agreed on, on, the, on the fundamentals of following in this way of Jesus, of God's love for us that brings life and hope and liberation and salvation. But we disagreed on some other things. And we would debate them and usually often agree to disagree. But the key thing was we respected one another. 
we may not agree with each other on everything, but relationship and love was more important. It wasn't about what was in our head, what we believed up here. It wasn't about our ego. It was about what we experienced in our hearts. And these were beautiful people who I love being with. And, and I realised in, in, in sharing this time with, with their family and the friends how special Heather was. And as I looked out at this congregation of 150, 200 people, I realised the diversity. People coming from all different faith backgrounds, or Christian faith backgrounds in particular, really different ideas and politics and and people of no faith, and, and probably some people of other faiths, and people whose lives were different from what Heather's was. But we were held together not because we believed all the same things up here. We came together because of this person, this person who loved deeply and cared compassionately and, and generously, this person who welcomed and was hospitable and went the extra mile for people whose heart reached out and touched people. And she shared her faith in practical ways, as well as sharing it with her words. What held us together was love, the love of this person, Heather, and of the God she worshipped, who was present in, in a very profound way with us. And, and as I come to this week's story from Mark's story of Jesus, I realised that He's saying much the same thing. We're continuing this story of moving to Jerusalem, Jesus sharing what does it mean to follow him, to him the Messiah. And in the background of the story is, is a raging war in, in Jerusalem and, and in the, the Jewish territories. Rebels have risen up in, in the year 66 and they fought the Roman occupation forces to try and drive them out. And two successful, two unsuccessful attempts by the Romans were dispersed for different reasons. And there was nationalism and pride and, and, and God is on our side and God is going to drive out the rebels, uh, the Romans. And then Vespasian became emperor and his son Titus was sent in with troops and he came in and he quelled the riot. So he put, it, put down the rebellion and much of the city was destroyed or some of the city was destroyed, particularly the temple. And it lay burning and smoking and smouldering for weeks. And the backdrop of, of Mark's story written towards the end of this war was this fighting, was the conflict, was the conflict between Rome and, and Jerusalem, between Jews and Romans, between people who took sides. The, the, you can see in the stories he tells of the, the smoke haze and the, the sky turning dark and the sun glowing red and, and the fear and people running to the hills to escape the war and, and the suffering that's happening of conflict. And in the midst of this, Jesus' way is about nonviolence. In everything Jesus teaches, it's about making peace through nonviolence, standing up against those who are unjust and, and doing the evil, but not doing it violently, finding peaceful ways to resolve our difference and conflict. And, he, and Mark takes this medium ground, middle ground, of not siding with the Romans or the rebels, but how can we find a way of peace, standing up against the, the oppression of Rome, but not violently. And there are people in his own community who are taking sides and betraying. And his words are there are saying, well, the way of Jesus is different. And in the story, it says John, one of the disciples, comes to Jesus and says, there's someone casting out demons and, and healing in your name. And we drove them away because they're not one of us. Revealing that this person doing good in the name of Jesus is not one of us. He doesn't belong to us, so therefore he's wrong. And we build a fence up and we exclude him. And Jesus said, why are you doing that? If he's not against us, he's for us. If someone gives you a, even a glass of water in my name, aren't they part of who you are? And as I looked around this, this gathering of the funeral, I saw people from all different types of Christian faith and, and no faith and realised we were united as one around love, around this faith and life and love of Heather who brought us all together. 
to, to celebrate her life, to grieve her death, and to celebrate her faith and her love, the depth of her hospitality and caring and compassion. There was an expression of who she was as a child of God. And then Jesus, holding a child still, says, don't let even one of these children stumble. Don't put anything in their way that will make them fall, that will push them aside or cast them out. Whatever you do, bring them in. Give them life, hope. Welcome them. Bring them, include them. And, and like that story of Heather that would go and, and sit with <clears throat> even one or two elderly people because they needed to play a game or have a conversation. Welcoming and holding even the least. That's what Jesus is saying. We are to lift one another up. We are to look into the eyes of one another and see the deep humanity, that each is a child of God, beloved. And we are to find ways of working together and living together in peace and love and grace. And I recognise in standing before this congregation that that's what Heather in her life and death has taught me and that's what these words of Jesus are about that we are to look beyond our differences and hold one another in our humanity to allow love and compassion and care and relationship prioritize our lives and knock down the fences that, that are and boundaries that, that we find around us. It's not about us and them, but how can we be a community of we, all of us, together? That's the vision of God, the vision of Jesus, and what I learn in Heather's life. Amen.